first of all, Israel is a special place. It's a, it's a crazy place. So when you put crazy people in a crazy place and you give them guitars that go really loud and drums that can play really fast, so you've got a hardcore, hardcore band, and uh, I think um, that maybe because where we are, where we are from, we've got such a good hardcore scene because uh, there's a, a lot, of, a lot going on politically and, and socially, and you can, and a lot of people will hear it and want to hear about it and will. Uh, connect to what you're saying and what you're playing and uh, I think it's this is like as I said earlier when you when you when you've got a lot a, a group of a lot of people and they all share the same ideas not the same ideas but they share a, some kind of idea and some kind of feeling and some kind of emotions about the place that they've been grow up grow up in so this is the scene the drum beat of the punk rock and the distortions of the guitar hearing the sing along and screaming seeing the beat it's like i think it's the the purest expression of uh, let's all have a good time and fuck the system and fuck and fuck the, the mainstream way you know because i i guess it's like that in every country if if in israel like the Every, every everyone here needs to go this you know um, in Israel like you go to school and then when you're 18 you go to the army for three years and then you finish that you probably go to to take a trip you come back you study and it's like this kind of living you know I don't like that and many people I know they don't like it and I know for me being in, in you know um, DIY stuff being organized Exactly like Smiley did, you know, it's the purest expression. It's uh, just this kind of mentality of um, this country has been built and has been built throughout a war and is always on an ongoing kind of war stage. Even if it's not 100% true, the people are here are always so stressed and the stress level is a lot higher than anywhere else that I've seen. And, um, and that's why everybody's angry and everybody's short fused. And um, yeah, we're just kind of like straight to the point kind of mentality. People don't have time to, people just don't want to give time because we're so afraid that this is all we got. Um, the beginning, I didn't want to join the army. And I saw that the way to get out of the army is either physical sickness or mental sickness, mental sickness. So. Um, you need you need to actually convince someone in the state that you are somehow mentally sick, which means it's all connected. Which means you cannot get a driving license. Which means when you try to apply to a job, they're gonna see if they ask for a personal record, they can see there's something wrong. Is a mental sick? Is crazy? He didn't go to the army because something's wrong with him and we don't want him. So I said, instead of just skipping it, I'll do it and that's it. When I was younger, uh, I was more influenced by the ideology behind it. Anarchy, but not in the meaning of chaos and destruction. Anarchy as in um, civilization built with um, small... Uh, I don't know if to call it cities, but smaller communities working together, um, voting about every step the community is going to do as a community, um, sharing everything and free mind and do whatever you want the way you want it. No one forces you to do anything. But the more I grew up, the more I saw it's not practical in in this 
kind of world we live in today, in the big city, in, the, in a big country. And Gozlan, my roommate, um, he printed the sticker a few days ago, and I saw it, and I thought, well, it's, it can be fun to to make this this is little flag that I'm got I got from my unit when I finished the service. This is the paratroopers sign. You go you go on, this goes on your shoulder, so everyone knows this is the paratroopers. This is the reconnaissance battalion pin. This is the demolition company pin. And this is for me being a commander in the battalion and this is a logistics pin. I went to a course to be a company sergeant. Okay. So I got this pin. So I say agony but I won't lie to you and tell you it wasn't fun. I love my family. I love them. song is about uh, what a lot, a lot, too many, I'm afraid, uh, people in Israel can relate to, which is losing a friend in battle, in, 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 in war, and uh, I got goosebumps just from talking about it. And uh, if you write about it and you are, and I write, I write about this theme out of anger and out of uh, I just couldn't understand how it all happened, so I just went to my uh, my book and start to write about it. As you know, this song took me about a year to write. It's not really a war, more just the mentality of um, I guess being Survival. afraid. Yeah, like um, we we all know the... that the countries around us are hostile. That's what they teach. Um, people here. Like the mentality is there's something waiting on the corner at each step you take so you better be careful and they're out there for you and you know it's, it makes you stressed. But, uh, it's all because of a shitty history really just one one case after another of I don't know just stupid people being stupid and then um, it's just um, there's so many stuff, like little stuff has happened throughout the years that nobody here really wants to trust the other side or has, uh, well, people are trying, but the, the majority is just, uh, is really scared of, of like, uh, making peace with the Palestinians because they can trust, they can trust their leaders, they can trust. <laughs> It's, it's a good example. Um, there's, for the Arabs, there's two days. Uh, the Nakba day, the big disaster, and the Naksa day, the small disaster. The big disaster is the, the building of the temple in Jerusalem for them, for the, us taking control of Jerusalem. That's for them a day, and there's riots and violence and demonstrations that day. And in the northern border of Israel, um, we, we knew, we had intelligence about people who are trying to cross the border to Israel and make, um, make a mess, make a riot, throw stones and rocks at soldiers and civilians. And we went that day to, um, what is it called? Match the Shams. Just, you know, it's a, a Druze village meters away from the border and we were there when, when we saw a big crowd like 200 people coming screaming uh, raging towards the border and at some point there's a there's a line that we were told from our commanders if they cross it no matter what you need to shoot them but only beneath the uh, west line only on the legs because they just cannot People cannot just cross into other, other countries without permission, without 
And they were doing it to provoke, to anger, to make us do something. And then in the beginning it was only sniper rifle allowed. So the snipers took out a few people's knees. And when you see it from 50 meters away, you can well, see legs flying. Because in that kind of caliber, when it hits you, no matter where in your body, shit's gonna fly. So you can you see, I saw it as a 19, 20 year old boy. It was like, whoa, what's, what's going on here? Yeah. And only after we came back to the base, it was uh, Friday, I think, you know, a day of rest, uh, we read in the newspaper that these people was taken by Ashaf from a refugee camp. They were appointed, they, Ashaf came with guns and told them, if you are not going to demonstrate, we're going to kill you, kill your mom, kill your children, kill your father. So all the families that send their boys, when they knew this is what's going to happen, that IDF is going to shoot them because they're doing something they're not allowed to. And I was shocked and I, I saw the newspaper to my friends. This, these people did what they did not because they wanted to, because someone told them, if you're not going to do it, we're going to kill your mom or your dad or whatever. popular committees in Palestine and if you look about like the really a broad look on Palestinian society I don't think there was time that Palestinians were more willing to to settle on a lot of stuff that they demand in order to make a reasonable place to live for everyone in this entrance to the Middle East place between the Jordan River and the sea and I think that the Israeli society, together and like not, not separately at all, with uh, all the governments, either right wing or left wing, it doesn't matter. The matter is if they are nationalists, if they are Zionists, if they claim this place to be a Jewish country. As long as there is a Jewish country, and it's the, the main idea of having a Jewish country is a racist, the bit racist of wanting to have only one kind of. Uh, ethnic group living in one place and as long as they see that they, are, they stay here not only as their right but there was a big backlash for for uh, Zionist people claiming it their home this place until they don't see themselves as like Palestinians equally right to live here as they live here it's very I'm very it's very hard to see how it will end here.